Hello, welcome back all. Looking at a stove today, a very affordable stove actually. Um, I was a bit apprehensive about buying one because I have other stoves and uh, this one is a bit rackety looking but um, I thought for you guys I'll get hold of one, try it out and see how it goes. I've used it once or twice in the garden for doing things like making char cloth. Um, so yeah, let's have a look what it's all about. Right, so this is the stove. Comes in a kind of canvassy case, which is nice. Um, my one is branded as Lixada, but you're gonna have seen these with all sorts of branding to no branding at all. That's because it's one of them Chinese reference designs. What that means is there's a factory making these, companies ordering them, or having them branded like laser etched or whatever with their logo. I've seen them up to about 50 pounds, I think. Um, yeah, so go for the cheapest one because they're all exactly the same. Pretty much the same with them folding chairs. It's not particularly light at 850 grams, but not too bad, I guess. You're not getting titanium for this sort of money. So here is the stove. Here's the trays and that. And a couple of pegs. So if I get rid of this for a second. Now with this stove, it being cheap, you can probably still see some blue bits of plastic, the coating of the steel where it's been um, CNC'd, etched, whatever, um, from the factory. You have to peel all of that off, which is quite annoying because obviously it gets bent with that on and stuff. So it's hard to get it all off. It'll eventually all burn off, so it doesn't matter too much. So as you can see, it kind of concertinas, and opens up. Hang on, the doors. You see what I mean by being a bit rickety? Door opening there. And I just open those up like so. There's nothing locking it in place. You've got a slot at the front and back, which are for airflow and to create a bit of a shelf for the ashtray. And that will just slide in from the side. Again, rickety, nothing's really solidly held in place or anything, but uh, you know, if you've got it on a nice firm ground, that's not gonna be too much of an issue. So those pegs we mentioned, there's holes in the side and you can slot them through. And there are three holes going up, so you can set that at different heights so you can use different fuels, such as a Trangia. Now I've got the uh, grate here, which I can lower down and put on that. I've put it at the lowest setting because I'm using wood. Apologies for the strong wind noise. Then you have this wiry mesh grill, which you can just sit on top. Now, you have these handles, and it does kind of hold in place. There is some movement, um, and it does kind of stop it folding in on itself with all them things in place, but it's still a bit, you know, rickety. It'll do the job. It just hasn't got that build quality. I've got some lovely, hard, dry Rubinia wood here. Really hard to cut but quite nice to actually split because it's kind of brittle because it's so hard. I'm just gonna use my Hudson Bay knife because that's what it's for. Now I've got that wood broken down and a few twigs to get it going. You don't want anything bigger than sort of this if it's dry. Kind of thumb finger, two finger size. Now you can put in bigger wood by using the door here with a rickety latch, <laughs> but a minor to size. So I'm just using this wood wall fire starter. twigs. Don't need too many because this is very dry. There's many ways to load these up. I'm just going haphazard and leaving lots of room for air today. The feeder hole at the front being as large as it is it is hard to keep it open. It's also a little tricky to open and close. 
There we go. I don't know what's going on there. I can even see the latch. Well, yeah, we're keeping that closed. <laughs> We'll do the two normal stove tests. Stick on the grill here. And we'll get a kettle on the boil and we'll see how much airflow that restricts. So I can see a tiny bit more smoke, but it does seem to be plenty of venting around there. That might be a bit different with a pan. Oh wow, that actually took me by surprise, that was a really quick boil. <sighs> Not gonna lie, surprised me so far. Other than the door being a bit... Mm, um, I suppose we better try the bacon test. So a pan, and some oil. The key ring latch is now so hot that I need a glove. You see how the wood can fall out quite easy. So I'm going to try it with the door closed, but I may have to open it. See, a lot of coals and stuff can fall out if you're somewhere where stuff is easily flammable. You might need a um, fire mat under it or something. Okay, we're on a bit of a slant here. I suppose I'll do one more. Now it definitely is suffocating it a little bit because the flames go up when I take the pan off. But it is a bit less smoky than I thought it would be. You can open the door to allow that airflow a bit more but lose heat through the front. I think the fact that it's a bit windy today is helping it. <laughs> As soon as I've taken the pan off, it's, it's flamed right up again. So the stove's still burning away here without anything on top, so that's nice. And I've got some sun come out as well, which is also nice because it's pretty cold. Um, so what can I say about this, really? Um, it's good that you can use it multi-fuel, so you can use coals in there, you can use um, an alcohol burner, wood burner. They say pellets and stuff as well, but I don't really see that working. Um, so it's nice price. It's universal in its fuels. Um, negatives, it's uh, it's rickety, but uh, for a starter stove or on a budget, um, it's going to do the job perfectly fine, to be honest. Um, it's far from perfect, but uh, it'll do the job. I'll put some of the measurements on the screen so you can see how big it is. It's about the size of my Bushbox XL, um, if you're more used to seeing that in the videos. In fact, I'll put a comparison picture up um, when I get home of some of the stoves next to each other. But yeah, if you're on a budget or something, uh, there's nothing wrong with this stove really. Um, some kind of pot stand on it would be good. Um, the door is far from ideal. You certainly couldn't pick it up and move it while you're using it like with some stoves. Um, but then that's the sacrifices uh, that you make for a more budget stove. I've seen some people on YouTube do uh, modifications to these to stiffen them up and stuff as well so that's another option for you um, I'll find some links below for the cheapest ones that are available at the moment like I said all brands are doing these um, but other than that thank you guys for watching hope that's been informative see you next time